In the previous video, we looked at the virial equation of state and virial coefficients, and we looked specifically about how this second virial coefficient here in this Taylor series for our uh, gas compressibility factor, how that second virial coefficient is really determined by the potential between two pairs of gas molecules, so the interaction between those two molecules how that is determined basically exclusively by that interaction function as a function of the distance between two given molecules. So now we want to look at some of these functional forms for what these interactions are commonly modeled as. So let's take a look down here. So this U of R, as I said, equals the interaction between a pair of gas molecules or atoms, whichever the case depends on, whichever it happens to be for that particular gas. So if we plot some functions here, so let's go over here and plot them on the right side here, so they're all over there. We're going to look at three different functional forms here, getting a little bit more complicated as we go. So we have our u of r function, which we're going to have on the y-axis. And that is as a function of r on our x-axis going up. r again being the distance between any pair of gas molecules or atoms. Okay, so first one we want to look at, we got 0, 0, 0, and 0, R there. <clears throat> first one we want to look at is called the hard sphere. So for hard sphere, it sounds pretty much like what it is. At, at short range, you're going to have an interaction which is infinite. So uh, the molecules cannot get closer than this given distance here. And then beyond that distance, their interaction is zero. So this is the hard sphere. So they can't get any closer than this. And then they're free to do whatever they wish outside of that distance there. So this distance of interest here is going to be a distance called sigma. So for the hard sphere approximation, u of r is going to equal infinity at r is less than sigma, and it's going to be equal zero otherwise, so r greater than or equal to sigma. Then for our second approximation here, we're going to be looking at the square well. Now this takes the hard sphere approximation and makes it a little less crude. It's going to have that same kind of excluded region of space where the molecules can't get any closer. But then at an intermediate distance, they're going to have some interaction. They're going to have some uh, negative interaction, so some net attraction to each other in this, in this region here. And once again, this parameter here is going to be called sigma. But we're going to get an additional parameter, this well depth here. This is going to be minus epsilon. So epsilon is the magnitude of this well depth. So for the square well, we have our potential function u of r. It's going to equal, it's going to be three values. Infinity at r less than sigma. It's going to be minus epsilon at sigma less than or equal to r less than lambda times sigma. So the parameter lambda is just going to be what factor times sigma does this uh, little well go into. So here we can imagine that lambda is 2 because this is about twice the value of sigma where this, this interaction goes back up again. And then finally at long distance we go to 0 where r is greater than or equal to lambda sigma. Okay, then Lastly, and perhaps the most common type of functional form 
uh, which is used in chemistry modeling for these types of for these types of van der Waals interactions between between uh, pairs of molecules. We have the Leonard Jones potential, which, as I said, is very ubiquitous in kind of atomistic modeling in chemistry. So what we have in the Leonard Jones potential is our U of R is going to equal 4 epsilon. Epsilon is going to be a parameter. Times parameter sigma over R. That quantity to the 12th power minus the same quantity sigma over R to the 6th power. So it's also called sometimes a 612 potential because you have this dependence, the repulsive part on R to the 12th and the attractive part on R to the R to the 6th. So that's where you get these, or R to the, R to the minus 12th and R to the minus 6th. So that's where you get the 612, this Leonard Jones potential, and these types of interactions that you see here. So if we were to do uh, this relevant integral here, I'm not going to look at it for the hard sphere or the square well. I'm going to uh, talk about specifically for um, the van der Waals equation of state, which we talked about before, where we had those A and the B parameters. So if we were to calculate that integral for the second virial coefficient of a gas, you would find that for the van der Waals equation of state, this is equal to the parameter B, which was the molecular size, minus A, the attraction strength between the two molecules, over RT. So why is this relevant to any of the functional forms that I just talked about here? We saw that these parameters were primarily empirical. Well, you can actually uh, kind of transform between these two uh, representations here. And you can actually calculate these in terms of these Leonard Jones parameters here. So let me show that for the parameter A, if you actually get it in terms of these parameters, and I'm not going to go through the math, this is really just meant to represent the connection between virial coefficients, the van der Waals equation of state, and the Leonard Jones potential. The parameter A we have equals some constants 8 pi Avogadro's number cubed times the Leonard Jones parameter epsilon times the parameter sigma cubed, all of that over 3. So it, it, is, it depends on not only the well depth epsilon, but it also depends on the size sigma. And here sigma is where uh, the graph passes through u equals 0. And then for our other parameter b, we have the molecular size parameter. That is just going to depend on sigma here. And that is going to be 2 pi Avogadro's number sigma cubed over 3. OK, so there's quite this nice connection here. We had our ideal gas equation of state, which was just uh, z equals 1, compressibility equals 1. And then we showed how you can have some deviations to that if you account for things like molecular size and the attraction between uh, molecules, which is represented by the parameters of the van der Waals equation of state. You can also represent that in the virial equation of state here, which is a Taylor series in, in the molar volume, this V bar. And this uh, Taylor series, this second virial coefficient in that, is related to this potential between between molecules, the only thing it depends on is the potential between any given pair of molecules, which can be represented reasonably well by this fairly simple functional form like the Leonard Jones parameter. And then we can actually calculate these van der Waals coefficients in terms of these Leonard Jones coefficients and vice versa. So there's a nice connection showing how the molecular behavior, the, the molecular level behavior 
uh, ends up going to a macroscopic observable into something like pressure or molar volume. And that's something we want to emphasize out throughout this video series is the connection between the microscopic, what the individual molecules are doing, and then the end result, which is the macroscopic observable like pressure or molar volume.